Hello, Year 7. This is Miss Kalora here. As you know, we this week we're focusing on poems with a message. Today the poem we are looking at is called Presents from My Aunt in Pakistan by Maniza Alvi. I'd like you now to write down the title and also the date, which is Wednesday the 20th of January 2021. Our learning objective for the day is to understand how the poet creates feelings about different cultures. For our starter activity now, I'd like you to answer the below thinking questions in four sentences. How important are clothes to you? Do you like to keep up with the latest fashion? Have you ever had to wear clothes that you didn't want to? If a relative sent you some clothes as a present, would you wear them? This is just a very quick five minute thinking and writing starter. So don't spend more than five minutes on it. Okay, year seven. So we're now going to read the poem, Presents from my aunt in Pakistan. So we can assume that the persona is, re is receiving presents from her family back in Pakistan. So let's find out what sort of presents. Okay. They sent me a salawar kameez, peacock blue, and another glistening like an orange split open, embossed slippers, gold and black points curling. Candy striped glass bangles snapped, drew blood, like at school fashions changed in Pakistan. The salawar bottoms are broad and stiff, then narrow. My aunt's chosen apple, green sari, silver bordered for my teens. I tried each satin silken top, it was alien in the sitting room. I could never be as lovely as those clothes. I longed for denim and corduroy. My costume clung to me and I was aflame. I couldn't rise up out of its fire, half English, unlike Aunt Jamila. I wanted my parents' camel skin lamp switching it on in my bedroom to consider the cruelty and the transformation from camel to shade, marvel at the colours, like stained glass. My mother cherished her jewellery, Indian gold, dangling filigree, but it was stolen from our car. The presents were radiant in my wardrobe. My aunts requested cardigans from Marks and Spencers. My sour chemise didn't impress the school friend who sat on my bed asked to see my weekend clothes, but often I admired the mirror work, tried to glimpse myself in the miniature glass circles, record a story how the three of us sailed to England. Prickly heat had me screaming on the way. I ended up in a cot in my English grandmother's dining room, found myself alone, playing with a tin boat. I pitched my birthplace from 50s photographs. When I was older, there was conflict. A fractured land throbbing through newsprint. Sometimes I saw Lahore, my aunts, in shaded rooms, screened from male visitors. Sorting presents, wrapping them in tissue. Or there were beggars, swooper girls, and I was there, with no fixed nationality, staring through frets work at the Shalimar garden. Okay, guys, and we have our glossary here. So you can see that salwar kameez is traditional dress in South and Central Asia, consisting of loose trousers, which is the salwar, and a long loose top, the kameez. A sari is a traditional dress in India and Pakistan that is loose, flowing, and often brightly coloured. A filigree is intricate metalwork used in jewellery that is usually of gold and silver. And Shalama Gardens, a famous gardens in Lahore, Pakistan. So now guys, I'd like you to take a minute to think about the message in the poem and then answer in four sentences. How do you think the speaker feels about the presence from her aunts? Find one quotation to support your answer, please. What effect does a simile glistening like an orange and the adjective radiant to describe the clothes have on you as the reader? 
what imagery is created? And finally, what is the structure of the poem? Does it tell us anything about the persona's feelings? Okay, just think about those questions now. We can see, we also know that our poet is British, but also Pakistani. So she moved from Pakistan to England at a very young age. And we see here that she was a baby. It says... I ended up in a cot in my English grandmother's dining room. So we can see that the persona has been brought up in England and but she has received these presents from her aunts in Pakistan. So just have a think about well, how does she feel about the presents that she has been sent, okay? So now I would like to spend six minutes on our post-reading questions. We've got a few more here. I want you to answer in four sentences. What is the poem about? What is this message in the poem? Write two to five sentences. Then write down five words or phrases in the poem that stand out to you. Pick one and explain your choice. And then explain how the poet uses your chosen language choices to create feelings about different cultures. So we've got our challenge question there, which links on from our blue question. Okay, so have a think, what is the poem about? What is the message in the poem? Five words or phrases that stand out to you. And then pick one and explain your choice. And then finally explain how the poet uses the chosen language to create feelings about different cultures, okay? So we've got the culture in Pakistan and we've got the British culture as well, okay? I'd now like you to write down one fact from each bullet point to further your understanding of the poem. So some of these questions in the previous slide will have crossovers now to this slide, okay? So I'm just going to read this out to you. So the message in a poem, so the poem is about identity. It tells a story of a teenage girl who is conflicted by her mixed race identity. She's part English, part Pakistani. The aunts in Pakistan send her gifts that represent her feelings, both positive and negative, about the country she has left <clears throat> and the country in which she is living. The structure of the poem is a free verse poem of seven stanzas of uneven length. Your lines also of uneven length. There is no formal rhyme scheme, okay? So there's no formal rhyme scheme. This could indicate the persona's scattered thoughts, her, her conflicted feelings that she has. And finally, our language and imagery. The voice is that of the poet, the first person I. The power of the poem derived from the object she describes, the clothes with their vivid colours and the jewellery. Every item has significance to her in terms of identity. The time scale is also important, comparing the baby she was who was brought to England compared to her as a teenager now. There is also the contrast of cultures, the sheltered aunts in Pakistan and the freer Western teenager. Okay, so we saw in the poem the beautiful imagery of the bright colours to describe the jewellery and to describe the clothes. So you have that gorgeous vibrant imagery there but do you remember when the part in the poem when the persona is sitting on her bed and her British friend also sitting on her bed is not impressed with the clothes that the aunts have sent the persona okay so we can kind of see that clash there the contrast of cultures okay so we've got the sheltered aunts in Pakistan and the free are Western teenager, okay? So we've got that theme of identity that runs through the poem. And we could also assume that it could even be about the poet herself. Because as we know, the poet was born in Pakistan and then came over to Great Britain when she was a baby. So now I'd like you to write down one fact from message structure and language and imagery okay 
Um, you'll definitely see some crossovers with your previous activity. But if you missed anything out in that activity, please add these on. OK, guys, so how does the speaker in the poem feel about the presence from her aunts? I want you to find three to five examples of words or phrases to show how the speaker appreciates and feels uneasy about the clothes, okay? So she, we've already discussed that she's quite conflicted, isn't she? She sees the beauty in the clothes, but also she feels that quite uneasy. Her friend doesn't like the clothes. She's not sure if those sorts of clothes from her homeland will fit in with the clothes that she's been exposed to as she's been more westernised in Britain. So I'd like you to find three to five examples to show how the speaker feels uneasy about the clothes but also appreciates the clothes, okay? So she, when she feels uneasy, maybe uncomfortable and when she's appreciative, she's recognising how good something is, okay? Once you've done this, I want you to move on and write down what your quotations tell us about the speaker's feelings. And I have an example for you here below. Okay. She preached the clothes, appreciates the clothes. I put evidence. Peacock blue, apple green, glistening like an orange split open. That's that beautiful image, that imagery there of the orange being split open. So how does the speaker feel? Well, the way that she describes the colours suggests that she admires the clothes and their bright, vibrant colours, okay? So she appreci appreciates the gesture of the aunt sending her these beautiful, beautiful gifts. However, she also feels uneasy about the clothes. So for our evidence, it was alien in my sitting room. So for how does the speaker feel? The word alien suggests that she doesn't feel like the clothes belong in her English life. So we've got that conflict of cultures there, haven't we? Okay, guys, so I've modelled one example for you now. I'd now like you to find three to five examples of words. You'll see that three is in red, so you should all have three examples at least. And five if you would like to challenge yourself by, find, by finding five examples, okay? So off you go now, class. We have 15 minutes to complete this activity. And I would like this submitted to either show my homework or teams, okay? This is not our final task. We have one more task left after this. Great, yes, Evan, well done. So, I would now like you to use the previous scaffolded model that I gave you with your own evidence and examples that you've used to now help you write your very own pizza paragraph to answer the question, how does the speaker feel about the presence from her aunt, okay? I do know Peter point evidence, technique, explanation and reader response, okay? We've got a lot of beautiful imagery, symbolism, adjectives and so on in the poem. Lots of figurative language that you should be able to spot and also explain the effect. I've given you now some start sentences to help you with this task. You could begin with the speaker fills about the clothes. We can see this when she says, the word suggests. On the other hand, the speaker also feels, the speaker describes the clothes as, or this suggests, okay? So 20 to 25 minutes to complete this. I'd like at least two Peter paragraphs in this framework timing that I've given you. If you feel that you're only able to complete one Peter paragraph, it must be a very detailed, big piece paragraph, okay? For our challenge extension, if you want to challenge yourself here, you can answer the question. Is clothing and other material possessions an important part of our identity? 
Use your understanding of the poem and quotations to answer the question, as well as bringing in your thoughts on your own clothing and identity. So you can then write another paragraph here. I'll be very impressed. You can give me two piece paragraphs for the red task, and then also give me another paragraph for the purple challenge task. And again, just like the previous activity, I would like you to also submit this either to Teams or show my homework. Okay, Year 7, once you've done this, this is the last task. So well done for trying your hardest today and doing your best. And just make sure that you remember to submit your work and your assignments. Thank you.